Okay, looks like it's working. I don't know what happened with OBS, but it just went bananas on me. Because why not, right? Okay, but looks like, uh, yeah, we have a live connection. Stream health is excellent. So let's get started, shall we? Let's start by... I didn't even get this ready. Then a little tweet. Letting people know that we're live. Sorry for doing this live, but, um, you know, things happen. Let's paste this here. And of course, let's bring in the thumbnail. All right, that's off. And thank you for joining me, 8. And I think Bugar was here, but he probably left. But he was here early, so still, thank you for joining me today. For another Wednesday, where we continue to build a, a learn management system using Livewire and Filament. So, from last week, we ended up with a test to show the course details. And hi, Bugar, how you doing? Thank you for joining me. So we have a course details test, but um, every time you get a passing test, the good thing to do after, right after, is um, test, sorry, reward your test or reward the code, always keeping the, the passing test, but doing things in a way that is more efficient or just cleaning up the things that you did in a rush just to get that passing test, but now you get to go back and move things around, make things look pretty, and still making sure that your test is passing. So that's what we're going to do today. But what I want to do is rework the test which we had passing with just an H1 uh, element on our view, uh, on our component view, just to show the course description. But what I, I want to introduce info lists because we're going to use this heavily to display information about our course. So having our passing test, I want to go back, install the info list package from Filament and then rework our view to show the course title using a text entry in an info list. So that's what we are going to do right now. Ignatius, thank you for following me. Clever Tech, hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Let's see, it has a course details route. This we're going to do later. For now, let's just rework. Rework makes the dream work. I have my test here. First, let's make sure that all of the tests are passing before moving on. So I'm going, there is just one file here, show course test, but I'm going to try and run the entire suite, which is just one file. So better test, better test, run suite. Fatal error, str contains, what are you talking about? What? STR contains. Sometimes uh, this plugin has its perks. For example, I was down here. Let's see if, if I just move up to the line where it says, where is the test description, if it works as expected. No. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's weird. Let's try running just one test, see what happens. What is happening? This wasn't happening before. And it is something about PES STR contains in PES being PES line 31. What?
This is so strange. Let me just open a terminal myself and then run test. Yeah. Do I have to upgrade or something? This is absolutely strange. Let's try upgrading. Hi, Luis. How you doing? Have you ever seen this? Have you ever had this error? Uh, I'm, I was doing some uh, work to, uh, yesterday in this exam, exact project, and now I come to it and I open it and I can't run PEST for some reason. Actually, let me just close VS Code and open it again. Just trying out the good old turn it off and on again, right? No, huh? Let's try a composer upgrade. Maybe there is something that broke. Oh, right. That's my bad. <laughs> so sorry. Oh my God. The when I work on my my uh, nine to five job, I need to use PHP seven point four for some legacy code, and I sometimes forget that I have to switch back. So I have to to I mean Windows. So I do sudo uh, update alternatives PHP seven point. I was in seven point four. Now I need to be in eight point one. Okay, maybe that fixed it. Of course it did. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. My apologies. Sorry about that. I should have checked before. Uh, Umaha, hi, how you doing? Ogi, hello. Thank you for joining me. All right, let's start this again. Uh, this is because looks like I removed the unit folder last time. So it won't work without it. So let's recreate that folder in the test folder here so new folder unit and just like that and again from the beginning let's make sure that all of our test files or, or all of our tests are passing before moving on to the rework so let's use better test run suit again and we only have two passing tests renders a uh, renders a page successfully and then show the course details okay the one that we are going to rework is this one right here from last week um by the way tuto are you using wsl yes i am i'm using wsl on windows with ubuntu 22 point something i don't remember uh let's see so First thing I want to do is, like I said, let's bring in sections. But before we do that, no, let's leave this. I want to remove this um, uh, magic strings from here, but I don't want to do that before I introduce uh, the sections. I'm sorry, the filament info package. So let's just start with that. So uh, let's see if I remember this from memory. I mean, if I can do this from memory. So composer install mm, filament. No, wait. Composer require. Wow. Composer require filament info lists 3.0 stable with all the requirements. Hello, Hamad, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Okay. That went on perfectly. And now we need to install the info list packages using PHP Artisan let me clear the screen first. PHP Artisan filament install, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to use scaffold 
and the scaffold is going to create it's going to configure actually it's going to create a bunch of files uh, regarding vid tailwind css config i think post post css as well is going to create a, a template for our components and yeah a bunch of files so let's run that and successfully publish assets perfectly route cache clear i already did this so no thank you okay so we have filament installed the next thing we need to do if we want to use the info list package in our component is go and modify the component itself so let's open showcourse.php and the only thing we need to do in order to use well a couple of things first of all this component class needs to implement has info lists and also because info lists and forms are basically one one in uh, in one in the other or they 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 interact with each other the component it also needs to have as forms i know that is not the purpose of this of your lives but i would like to know if it's possible to talk to talk to you about a personal project that i have sure no problem uh hit me out on on discord uh, we can talk there uh, i don't know if you're in my server or not but yeah just send me a dm on on discord and we can talk no problem so once we implement these two contracts, you, you can see a squiggly line here, and that is because these two contracts require you to um, implement a bunch of uh, functions. But Filament is uh, very graciously providing a couple of traits that will do that, for, do that for us. So all you have to do is use interacts with uh have info lists like so and also interacts with forms and using that all the squiggly lines are gone no problem so now this is enough for the component to start using info lists but we need to create one public function that is going to render that info list in our view and you're probably you have probably seen this if you have used filament in any capacity this is going to look very similar to the forms the, to the way that resources uh, display forms so we need a public function there is no real um standard when it comes to this function but the recommended naming convention is that you name it first of all the name of the of the model that you're using so course and then info list this function is going to take in one parameter which is the info list itself which is coming from filament info lists info list and it's going to return that same info list in here we are going to return info list that was passed in as parameter but we are going to define that info list schema and that schema is just an array of components or entries as it is called for info lists and we this is where we are going to define the text entry for the course title but how does how does this info list know what model has it has to use to display that text entry so we need to use another method called record so this record is going to receive a model 
and that's that's the model that the info list is going to use to build itself around where do we get this course or oh, sorry where do we get this model well we already have a public title we are we are already receiving that course as a parameter so what we can do last time we did this was because we were displaying the title as um, as a text in the view but now we are not going to do that we are not going to worry about displaying specific attributes of this course model in our view filament is going to take care of that so what we can do is instead of having a public title we can go back to what we have and instead have a public course course variable this is going to be available in the view but also we are going to we're not going to use it in our view directly we're just going to give it to the info list package and let it uh, handle the displaying of the information and in the mount param in the mount method we can just say this course equals course Potentially, since we are going to uh, be using this as a full page component, you could do away without this um, method altogether. Because when you are using a route for a full page component, you are going to probably, or more, most likely, you are going to use route model binding to pass the course into the component, just like you do when you pass a model into a controller and laravel knows what you're passing in is a model or an instance of course and then going to fit is going to fetch that from the database create an instance and put it into the component and since the component already has a public property with the same type and same name then it's going to just assign it directly but it is always safe to have that mount in case you do some changes or modify something on your component that changes that behavior so it is completely fine to have a mount and it's even clearer that you are taking that in a parameter as a parameter and you're putting that in your public property <laughs> thank you luis yeah give it a like give it a like to the to give a like to the to the stream if you are if you're here just go down there smash the like button thank you very much so yeah now we can take this this course and just pass it as the record for the info list and now in the schema first of all i'm going to go up here and create one more use line just for info lists so that I can go back here and then say info lists info list info lists wow I can't info lists components and we're going to use a text entry component for the title Now, that's all and well, we defined our schema, we had a text entry, and it should show in the, in the components template. Well, not yet, because now we have to go into the components template and then render this method, and then call this method that will actually render the info list in our component. So let's go into, if I remember correctly, It's inside resources views livewire show course dot play dot php, which as of now was just using that title property that we removed, but instead we can just remove this completely and just say this course info list. So that's all the rework. So technically, if we run our 
test to it again, everything should still be green. And it is. Perfect. So what we did in all of that process was instead of using a title property or just a string in the view, we are introducing info lists so that we can use that to display the course title. And just to show you that is, this is not a false passing, we can then go here. And let's add one more to see the course tagline. And we can add that to the state up here. Now this probably is going to pass and I'll explain why in just a second. Let's try running just this test. Okay, it failed. Perfect. Uh, so basically we don't have a column tagline. What I th what the reason I thought it was going to pass, it was because if you're using just factories without having these magic strings, strings, um, the, the factory was going to create or try to create a record with a tagline, but instead just ignore that and create a record with just the title. And then if we assert that tagline here without a specific string, it was going to say, uh, "Am I able to see nothing in the in 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 the template? Am I able to see nothing rendered?" And it was going to pass basically. But since we are using specific strings, which I recommend when you're starting the test, um, then it failed because this tagline is not a column in our table. So let's fix that real quick by opening the migration file create courses table let's add one more string column for the tagline run the test again now it's failing because that tagline is not rendered in the page so now we can go back to our test and yeah uh, we're trying to render that in the page or we're trying to assert that we see it in the page and that's how we know yeah it's a the info list is working but we need a new text entry to show the tagline so we go to text to show course sorry and let's add one more component to the schema one more text entry and this time let's make it for the tagline and if we run that test again we are back to green perfect so yeah now we have info lists in our in our uh, component which is great so let me mark this as completed we install info list we updated the liveware component now i want to go back and remove magic strings from our from our test so how do we do that and let's go back to our test and here we are already assigning this to a course variable because we need to pass that as a parameter to the show course class so instead of using this strings here let's try removing them instead show course title in course tagline and that works we remove magic strings from the assertion. Now let's remove it from the actual state of the component, or sorry, the factory. So let's try doing this. Now that we know that this is working and it's passing, we can remove this and now it's going to fail. Why? 
because the factories don't have any definitions yet. So, for example, the factory doesn't have a definition to fake the course title. So now we can go back and modify that. So let's open course factory. And in this array, let's say title is equal to fake sentence. Run the test again. Now it's complaining about the tagline. So let's fix it. Add one more here. Tagline, uh, again, fake sentence, that's okay. Save that, run the test again, and we are back to passing test. Awesome. Now, we uh, reworked the test twice, once for the code that was making the, co the, the test pass, and the second one to improve the test readability by removing magic strings. Uh, let's mark that as complete. Now, the next thing I want to do is to test the routes. As of now, we are testing our component in isolation. So it doesn't matter if we use that component in a route as a full page component or as an inline component inside another page or another blade component. Sorry, another blade um view so what i want to do now is since i'm going to use these components as full page components i want to make sure that my routes are present in my in my project so for example i want to have a route that leads me to the course details page so for that hi there web hello from indonesia hey how you doing thank you for joining me so for this, let's create one more, one specific test file for just the routes. Going to open a terminal here and then php artisan test test. Let's call these routes test. Created in feature. All right, let's open that file. Let me close a few first. There you go. Routes test.php. It already has some code in here, but I want this to say it has a route for the course details page. And this is still using kind of php unit format so let's uh, rework this a little i like to use the get function from livewire so you just use function pass laravel get and it's just the same as uh, saying this get now the route that i need or the route that i want uh, first of all I want to follow the convention, the conventions from resource controllers that Laravel, Laravel already has. So let's say courses, this will be a get request to courses, and then I'm going to pass the course ID or the course, yeah, the course ID as a parameter. So I probably need a course, right? So let's say course. Equals. We already have a factory for this. So course class factory and create. And because we already modified the factory, we don't have to worry about the state here. Now I could just concatenate the course ID like this, or actually should be get route key to be safe. But there is a better way. Because what if the route changes down the, down the line? 
then I'll, I'll have to go into my test and then modify the string for the route, etc. But a better way would be to just use route and use the route name. In this case, the convention would be courses show. And to this uh, route, we need to pass the course as a parameter because again, we are going to use route model binding. So we just say course that'll be the name of the uh, of the parameter in the route and then we can just pass the course model as is and we can remove this assertion from here and we can just assert directly with using assert okay Thank you, Luis, my like police. Okay, so this is our test. Save that and let's run it, see what happens. So let's run this test. And first thing we have is the route course show is not defined. So now I need a route. So let's go to the web.php file this file is located in resources no not resources sorry routes web.php and we already have one route that is the one that uh, renders the laravel welcome page but let's hijack this one and for example instead of the root I want this to go to courses and then course instead of a callback function I'm going to use the livewire component directly so this is how you set this is how you use a livewire component as a as a full page livewire component so show course class and finally, I want to name this route as courses show. Okay, we have a route. Let's test again. Now we have expected status code. Okay, we are getting a 500 response. Okay, this is interesting. The 500 response comes from Vite. Basically, there is no Vite manifest found in our project. Why is this failing with Vite? Well, the way a full page library component works, first of all, if you only... We, have, we haven't had this problem so far when testing the component in isolation, right? Because when testing it in isolation, that component runs regardless of where it's being used. Full page component, inline component doesn't matter but when we test a route that uses that component as a full page library component laravel is going to try and insert the content of that component of that component's view in a template file and that template file by the way was created for us when we use um, filament install dash dash showcase uh, sorry, showcase um, scaffold sorry so that template file is located in resources views components app.blade.php and it looks like this it's just a full um, html file with a bunch of stuff that is required to run filament and if you look at this section here in the head, we're using Vite, right? And Vite is, we are asking Vite to load this page, this uh, file, app.css. So basically our styles. But one, we haven't installed Vite. We haven't run, uh, we haven't installed any local um, dependencies, right? That's one. Second, and I'm going to show you, Vite needs to know where to find 
the compiled version of this file. And I'm going to show you how that manifest looks. First step here is to run npm, if you like npm. But in my case, I like to use, I like to use bun, which is basically the same thing, but faster. So yeah, you can use npm uh, install, first of all, because we haven't done that, by the way. Or you can just say bun install. So that will take care of installing all of the local dependencies, Tailwind CSS, Tailwind CSS forms, typography, the forms and typography plugins, auto prefixer, the vid plugin, post CSS, etc. All right. Now that's installed. The next thing we need to do is, well, first of all, are we going to run this in dev or production? If you are going to work on your template and you need that template to reflect changes live uh, as you save uh, changes in your in your views, then run bun run dev. And that will create a vid dev server, which will allow you to have live reload on your template. Or if you are going to publish this to production and you're ready to ship it, you can just, you can run bun run build. And that will call compile and min minify and compile all of your assets into a couple of files. In public build assets app, and there you have the files that were created. Now, it also created the manifest. And this is what was missing before. Because when we ask V to return this resource, this CSS file, is going to go to public build manifest.json and then look for that file in uh, this JSON file. And then he's going to know, oh, you want the app.css? Fine. That file is compiled in here. And this is the file that vid is going to return to us. Without a manifest, vid doesn't know which, where is the compiled version of the file that we're requesting or the resource that we're requesting. So now that we built it, we can run the test again. And now it's passing. Perfect. And I hope that's clear why that was failing, because if you're testing again, if you're testing the component in isolation, it doesn't matter if you use it in a full page component as a full page component or as an inline component, it runs in isolation. But if you're going to test the route that uses that, com that component as a full page component, then the template, uh, uh, um, the template file comes into play and that requires Vite and that's why it was failing, but now it's passing. Uh, Luis, let me switch. Do I have a window for the chat? No, I lost that. This is the part that I've been having problems. I have some bootstrap templates, but with the, la with the last updates of LiveWare and Alpine.js dependencies, it's bringing me is bringing issues. Hmm. Bootstrap. Yeah, that can be that can be a problem. The thing is, I stopped using Bootstrap a while ago. Ever since I discovered Tailwind, I never went back. I understand it's a valid it's a valid option and in fact in my my job I we use it a lot but I I stopped using it in my projects for my Laravel projects of of late I just stopped using Bootstrap maybe I should go back and try and uh, use a Bootstrap template on one of my projects for for Livewire. If you're having specific issues, you can go ahead and ask in Discord any questions that you need. 
uh, just find the technical channel that best suits your question and I'll do my very best to go in there and find a solution for you and work together to find the solution to your problem. Bootstrap uses JS and Alpine have the, have the, can't really read. Problem with the little heart that is always in the view, in the way. But yeah, uh, if you have specific issues, specific problems that I can't answer here for the sake of time, the, that's the Discord server, and uh, I'll be I'll do my best to help you there. Okie dokie. So uh, let's see where are we right now. R route tests that is done. We install it, and now we get to a point where. Let's actually see our component in action, right? Let's um, step away for a moment from the tests and actually render our page and see how it looks. To do that, I probably need to run my migration first. And it's not a problem to run our migrations right now, even though it's pretty much incomplete, because we can then refresh it later when we create more tests and add more, add more things to it. So let's do PHP artisan migrate and run the test as it is. Would you like to create the database file? Yes, please. We have the create course table created already. Sorry, the courses table created already. And I'm probably going to need at least one course record. Again, this is all going to be wiped out later, so there is no there is no problem. Let me use PHP Artisan Tinker to create that, and we can say course factory factory. I do want to set the state, and I think we're going to have a problem here, maybe. Uh, let's set the state to title course title and then the tagline, right? Let's leave the tag tagline as fake. That's all right. And then call create. Oop, typo. Actually, let's. Why don't we just say create an LMS with Livewire? Because that what that's what we're doing, right? use that as an example all right we have a model created with a, with an id of one uh, let me run i'm going to create a new terminal and then run bun run dev to create a v dev server and another terminal for PHP artisan serve. All right, let's go to the browser and navigate to our route, which is in localhost courses one. Okay, we have information in our page and it looks absolutely terrible. So let's make it a little bit better, shall we? Just, uh, we still have a few minutes, and I know I started late and I apologize for that, but we still have a few minutes to make this a bit more presentable. And we're going to do that with layouts or with layout components for the info list builder, specifically the section layout. So let's quickly go back to our component file, let me close this, 
open show course and in the schema I'm going to use info lists components section we're going to make this without a title and this takes in a schema as well so we can just grab these two and put them inside the section schema and just with that let's go back and it's hardly visible but you can see there is a small line here because all of our uh, text entries are now within a card like uh, component let's make it a little bit more visible if we go back to the template in resources views components app dot blade dot php we can probably add one class here maybe bg why don't i have never mind bg let's say gray 100 and now it's more visible the background is a little gray and you can see the car like component now instead of having that cover the entirety of the page let's uh, try to center it give it padding on the sides padding on the top and center it on the page when we are looking at it in a medium to large device we can probably do that by okay this slot is basically the contents of the component so we want to wrap that let's wrap it in a main tag and this on on this main tag let's add a class let's say i want this to be full width on small devices so w full and on medium devices let's give it a max width of 3xl maybe and on large devices let's do max width of 6xl which is around 20, 10 1024 pixels something like that and also let's center it on the page center that on the page with margin x auto finally let's give it some padding on the sides with padding x so that's the horizontal axis and let's use uh, four padding x four and padding on the top padding top let's say two just for the sake of seeing how it looks a lot better i could do with more padding on the top actually much better there you go and now if i actually use a small device there is no the the component extends to the full width but since it has not padding it looks good <coughs> sorry and as i increase the screen size that's medium to large that's a medium device and this will be large perfect so yeah that's basically using info list now we are going to toy around with sections and we are going to use sections within sections and use different layouts for those sections so that we can make our course page looks look more presentable and more professional and we are going to do that next week so for now let's just tag this as completed we have a tagline and we are going to leave the course description for uh, the next week next week as well because it's just text what i do want to cover also next week after we move things around in the section is to use instructors that we, that requires us to use another uh, model also the total number of episodes we want then the, the every course to have a certain number of episodes which are going to require again another entity and that entity is going to have duration 
and we are going to have title uh, as well for those entities bunch of stuff that we we need to cover next week but for now thank you so much for joining me today and again if you like this live stream don't forget to click that like button subscribe to the channel so don't you so, so you don't miss the next one and i'll see you in the next one